we start with the second game of the two. That is game number three tonight in Minneapolis. As the Timberwolves head home, feeling pretty good. A 2-0 series lead over Denver. But game number two was on Monday. A lot of time for both of these clubs to reassess, make their adjustments, and get ready for game number three on this Friday night in the Twin Cities. Minnesota booked as a four-and-a-half point favorite. The total is at 205. It is the lowest over under, even up by a hook we have seen so far out of any of these three games to begin this series. Yeah, and this is one of those where you typically say to yourself, right, how many times have you heard coaches and players say this? Boy, once you get your tail kicked, you want to get back on that court as soon as possible to get that bad taste out of your mouth. I actually think the opposite in this scenario. You take a look at the Denver Nuggets at home. Didn't play all that well in the first two games against Minnesota. I think this rest is actually good for them to recalibrate, get around as a team, watch some extra film, maybe get a little bit more healthy and head into this one. Because quite frankly, if they would play two days later, you probably would have been looking at 3-0 in a way you go to a 4-0 series sweep. I think that actually helped the Denver Nuggets when typically we always think it's the opposite at this point. Now, when you go to the FanDuel Sportsbook, Benny, take a look at the player points perspective here and what we anticipate. Nicole Jokic is at 29 and a half again, rightfully so. Didn't play all that well in game number two and just missed out on the triple-double, which, hint, hint, I'm going to be back on that triple-double market for Jokic. But as you yeah. scroll down on who's available tonight, Ben, do you know who's missing from that Denver lineup right now? That's Jamal Murray. And that is key because yeah. if you can factor on the Nuggets, we know how good they are, how well-coached they are. They won a championship last year. They're battle-tested. If they're coming into this game 100%, you're pretty confident. Not only can they win this basketball game, but stay within five points. If you tell me tonight, we're going to get maybe a minutes restriction on Jamal Murray, or he's not going to play. This series is basically a wrap at this point, and that can't come at the worst time. It's almost the exact opposite of what we're getting out of the Knicks. The Knicks are up 2-0. They can afford some of these games to rest their players, not be 100%, right. and take losses because they'll still be in control. You can't have that from a Denver side. If you're coming into this game banged up, already down 0-2, and all that momentum on Minnesota as is, boy, that can't hold up for you. So it almost feels like, to me, is it Nikola Jokic has to go 35, 20, and 15 for them to hang around? It feels that way for me, Ben. Yeah, probably so, DRS. The triple-double prop for Nikola Jokic tonight is plus 200. As Donnie said, he barely missed a triple-double, two assists shy of getting mm-hmm. to that mark despite not playing all that well. 5 of 13 from the floor, 16 points, 16 boards. He has not been nearly as efficient in this series or really the postseason as he was during the regular season, but was just named MVP for the third time in the last four NBA campaigns. Jamal Murray was atrocious in game number two on Monday night. Three of 18 from the floor, only eight points. Nearly had as many things thrown onto the floor at referees, Mm. two, as he had made field goals, three in game number two. But to Donnie's point, no points prop listed as of this moment for Jamal Murray. Now, the Minnesota Timberwolves have played six games in this NBA postseason. Minnesota has won all six. They have been an underdog in their most recent four, the final two against Phoenix, the first two against Denver. They have won outright in each. The Timberwolves are a a four-and-a-half point favorite and more than likely expect Rudy Gobert back tonight for game number three. Of course, he was absent from game number two, attending to the birth of his first child. He's back tonight. Now, Donnie, we're talking about this game from the Denver perspective. This is the last Mm -hmm. stand, in my opinion, for the Nuggets in this. (laughs) Did you laugh because my voice cracked? Is that why you laughed? No, I didn't, but I'll laugh now. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) Okay, very good stuff. This is the last stand for the Denver Nuggets in this series. It's why I am buying in with a Nuggets ticket to win the Western Conference and to win this series into that money line price as the underdog i don't care if they cover and lose by three they got to win this game outright if you think denver covers bet the money line price here in this must win can't lose game number three but we're looking at it from the denver perspective to keep this game close and to keep this series even somewhat competitive and maybe not correctly at the right side that is the t wolves who have been nothing but sensational here to begin this playoff run 
Yeah, and that's what you're sort of fighting against, too. It's not just you're saying to yourself, like, oh, we know the Denver Nuggets have it in them to come back, but sometimes you take a look at a team like, okay, we blew those first two games. Coming into the playoffs here, the T-Wolves, again, disrespected against the Suns at that plus-114 price of the FanDuel Sportsbook, end up sweeping the Suns, and here they are in round number two and on the verge, I guess you could say, of sweeping the Nuggets because both of these teams are yeah. at home in their own building, which are going to be favored, Ben, in both of those games. If we take a look and say, you know, which way is the betting public going in this? If we told you already it's still going to be a slight lean towards the Timberwolves because of what we've seen in the first two games yeah now what I'm looking forward to in this game is if I can see right again we always talk about this the way you can have those betting advantages before the game pre-flop hey I love Denver oh no Jamal Murray doesn't look like he's even half of his self out there they're going to get beat but if Jamal Murray's in this game like we saw Luka Doncic last night, what did I talk about with Luka last night hey what happens if Luka starts that game and hits a couple threes which is exactly what he did that's a good omen here for right. the Mavericks who won that game last night same experience for me tonight on Jamal Murray. If we see him early and often here, knocking down his open jump shots, because he's going to have a lot of those here, that also means the assist will go up from Nikola Jokic if you're trying to look at the triple-double. But if we're just looking at pregame here, right, you look at that line, it makes sense here. And yes, Minnesota should be favored by about five points, because when you're looking yeah. at that Denver lineup intact, if it was 100% healthy, this is a completely different scenario for me. But this game is going to go two ways for me, Ben. This has the makings of we're getting busted out in the first half, no doubt about it, and it's a wrap. Or this game is going to be a couple-point lead for one team, a couple-point lead by this team in the second quarter, and vice versa all the way through. But this has two vibes for me. Either we're close, and maybe you get a Nuggets victory, or we might be looking at a laugher by late third quarter. It's hard to say that, though, with the Nuggets and how good they actually are. But sometimes environments yeah. dictate what's going to take place. It's going to be a wild atmosphere for Minnesota. And also, what are we getting out of Jamal Murray? That's the big question mark. Not only have the Timberwolves won their last four games as an underdog outright, they also won and covered in their first two in Minneapolis against Phoenix, winning both of those games by double digits, including, as things stood, that opening game of the postseason by 25 against the Suns. So the Timberwolves have won all six playoff games, have covered in all six as well. Different story for the Nugs, who have been down to the break in six of their seven postseason games. They have not covered in five of the seven postseason games, but did win outright in their only game booked as a very slight underdog. And I mean a one-point line and a couple of cents on the money line in game number three in Los Angeles against the Lakers. I also want to focus on the total briefly here. Both of the first two games, 209 and a hook from that over-under perspective. Now at 205, both of the first two games stay under. Denver hasn't reached the century mark yet in mm -hmm. this series. 99 in game number one. 80 in game number two Minnesota has scored exactly 106 in each of the first two games in this series and Anthony Edwards scored 43 in game number one had 27 in game number two the Ant-Man's prop tonight is 27 and a half you know he is going to flirt with that number once again Oh, absolutely. And also, if you're trying to correlate that total, right, 205, if Denver's going to win this, it feels like it has to be an under game, specifically yeah. with the outcome we don't know, technically, of Jamal Murray. If this game goes over the total, that's going to benefit Minnesota because the one thing we are, you know, keeping on the wraps, that game number two with how dominant Minnesota was on defense was without the defensive player of the year even playing there, which he's going to be back tonight. That's an extra boom right there. So they are back whole and intact. This is a tough hill to climb for the Denver Nuggets at this yeah. point, which is why their price point for the series and also to win the West and the NBA odds are going in the opposite direction. They haven't even played in a couple days here. Let's see what happens here, but things aren't aligning for the Denver Nuggets to make a back-to-back -back run here, no doubt about that. Without Rudy Gobert, who became the third NBA player in history to win four Defensive Player of the Year awards, Minnesota held Denver to 80 points, and the Nuggets shot worse than 35% from the floor. That needs to drastically alter tonight. The Nuggets team total 100 and a hook. You would expect them to go over if they are going to win this game outright and keep it close.